What's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent, this one Nintendo slash Switch focused video, plus a non Switch one, my thoughts of a movie I saw over the weekend, though. Sorry I didn't do a video um, last week. Um, a couple of things popped up. I was able to squeeze in to see a movie, but other than that, there were some things I had to deal with, so apologize I couldn't do a video last week, but you know. Sometimes things happen and you gotta deal with them. Alright, so for this video there are going to be three stories going to be related to Nintendo and the Switch as I mentioned earlier for this week. So why don't we get started with, <clears throat> excuse me, with the first video. First, I mean first story though, um, if I can get the thing up. Okay, so the first, the first story that came out for this week was a comment that I, I learned that Reggie made about 4K TV. As you all know, um, 4K is 4K TV is sort of the, like the new big thing out there right now. But according to Reggie, or at least according from Nintendo and of course Reggie's perspective, um, he has a different view on this though. Um, again, all the articles and all will be in the link in the description of this video. You can check them out and read and come to your own conclusion. So the first one, the article from according to Nintendo Everything, the article reads, don't expect Nintendo to pursue 4K gaming anytime soon. Well, that's something to something other console manufacturers are starting to focus on. Nintendo of America President Reggie Frizume believes that the audience is currently currently a bit too, limit, too limited. According to the comments that Reggie says, quote, the Nintendo mission is to reach as many consumers as possible and to have them engage and have fun with our intellectual properties aka ips that's what we try and do so inherently we go through we go for a more mainstream audience in inherently we want our products to be affordable we want our products to be easy to pick up and experience um, low learning curve, um, debatable, depending on your point of view on that. We want our IPs to shine as we deliver those experience. That's the way we approach it. And so what that means is a sweet spot of $300 for the Nintendo Switch. Again, some people will agree or disagree with it being that much, $300. A platform that has Mario and Zelda and Splatoon going against a more limited consumer's consumer pool a higher price point require investment in other ways 4k tv what have you that's a strategy for us candidly is a bit too limited though um based on that comment made from uh reggie though i have to say he's kind of right sort of at least how that's how i'm looking at it though um i do agree he does raise a good point on this though um right now as it stands with uh 4k tv it is true that it is so somewhat a bit expensive and as of right now not every household has a 4k television inside their home let alone not everyone can afford a 4k television at the moment that being said though i somewhat disagree on the fact that as basically t technology gets a bit better at some point though 4k will be ex will be cheap for a lot of people to afford and able to get i mean if we look at basically what happened when hd when hd tvs came out or you know blu-rays at the time it was very expensive it was not everyone could afford it and a lot of people were sticking with you know dvds standard um standard TVs for the time being though, but as the technology got a bit better and the price started to go down, we started to see people start investing in HD TVs and start investing in Blu-rays. And I see that with 4K though. So while Nintendo may be saying that we're not investing in 4K right now, I do believe that there is going to be a certain point where they will have to step into developing games for in 4k um yes it is a bit expensive for the moment but i do think that they need to sort of keep their eyes on it so while i somewhat agree with reggie's comments i do think that they need to sort of keep an eye open on the fact that they can't really ignore the 4k market at least not at least at least 
I mean, you know, at least not yet or anything. I mean, I'm not saying that they need to develop it right away, but at some point they're going to have to take into consideration to developing for, you know, game putting their games in 4K. I mean, I understand they want to make them, you know, affordable for people to pay, but you know what? A lot of people, at one point when the Switch was announced at $300, people were, some people were upset about it. Um, the fact of the matter is because it was costing that much, but again, we're beyond the days of system costing $200 or anything like that. I think those days are long gone right now. They're, they are completely long gone. So, bottom line, my take on it is that he's somewhat right, though, that 4K isn't a big deal now, but I do think Nintendo has to keep an eye on it, and I do think that at some point they are going to have to invest in developing their games in 4K. As 4K becomes becomes more mainstream and becomes affordable for people to get. Okay, um, we're going to take a little bit of a break. When we come back, we will get to part two of our video, and I'll be talking about Steep, a game that was announced for the Switch, um, that was that was released for another release on the PS4 and Xbox One, that might be in trouble, at least the Switch version is. So we'll take a little bit of a break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video, of our My, My Two Cent video that focuses on the Switch and Nintendo. Um, so we'll get, why don't we get started with the second part of our video. And for this one, is probably whether or not it's a certain game that from Ubisoft that probably is having a harder time than Ubisoft originally thought it would be. And it ha it's not Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. It's probably one of their own games. So, okay, that's my phone, don't worry about it. Let me look it up, see if I can get it. Uh, here it is, okay. Basically, the game is called Steep. S, well, let me move this over. It's called Steep, S-T-E-E-P. It was basically a winter sports open world, open world hybrid that was released, uh, that was released with mixed reviews. Obviously, it was released on the PS4 and the Xbox One. And although the game was announced as a game coming to the Nintendo Switch when they show off that video of games they revealed for the Switch, though, it has been rather quiet about what has happened, has been rather quiet with the game, and nothing was mentioned at E3. Until recently, an article popped up from IGN France, which was later picked up on Nintendo Life and My Nintendo, which are Nintendo sites or Nintendo family sites. So, according to the article from IGN France, again, links in the description, you can check it out. Uh, basically, it says, quote, IGN France is reporting that sources inside Ubisoft are claiming that development has slowed considerably at the studio struggling to get the game to work on the Switch. Nintendo has stepped in to offer help in the situation, particularly with the online structure, but the source also claims that there is a chance the game may not end up seeing a release on the Switch. Ubisoft's official line is that the game is still on the way to the platform, so this news should be taken with a grain of salt, but does make does make one wonder as to what's going on behind closed doors. Now, as of right now, though, uh, there are several ways I look at this, um, or at least two ways, though. As of right now, there's been no other, outside of what Ubisoft says, um, it's possible this information, again, like I said, it's taken with a grain of salt, it is possible this information could be false. So, I mean, that is a possibility. That said, though, um, if Ubisoft is having trouble with it, um, that's not good. That is not good, especially for those who are looking forward to seeing this game come to the Nintendo Switch. I don't know whether it's not that it's the Switch, it's the problem with the Nintendo Switch, considering it doesn't have the same, arch same or at least the same architectural structure, if I'm saying the name wrong, I apologize, like the PS4 or Xbox One. I don't know if it's the Switch or if it's Ubisoft having a problem itself trying to port something over that couldn't, or they're having trouble trying to port it over. So. Whatever the case may be, though, 
it's not a good sign. It really isn't. And while this has only been one game announced for it, though, I do th think it is a little bit worrisome if, it start, if we start seeing a pattern that developers are having a hard time bringing some of these games over to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't know if this may have to do with the online structure. Um, Ubisoft has, unfortunately, this is one of the big criticisms about Ubisoft. They've been criticized as to basically pushing their luck with DRM, you know, the whole, oh, whole always online. I'm not a big fan of DRM at all. I think it's a dumb thing. I mean, I'm not against online multiplayer or anything like that, but I don't like the idea of the game always being online. So I, if that's true, I am a little worried if this starts becoming a pattern that we start seeing other developers are going to have a hard time and they're not going to be able to bring their games over. And that's, that could, and again, I'm not jumping to the conclusion and saying this is going to happen, okay? I mean, there, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out, but if we start seeing a pattern like that, this could lead to a problem for the Switch down the road. I mean, ranging from getting third-party support to the possibility that we could run into one of the biggest problems that plagued the Wii U. Um, it's not the only problem, but it certainly was one of the biggest problems, and that is the dreaded drought where a long stretch periods that we had to wait for games to come out, especially from Nintendo games as well. Now, as I said earlier, it's too early to tell. Right now, Ubisoft is saying that the game is still coming, though we'll have to wait and see if it does come or whether they pull the plug on it completely. But it is, if the story, if the story is true that they're having a hard time, then that is a little bit troublesome and it and it'll be and it could impact if other developers might be running into the same problem uh, i mean we know reggie made a comment said about 80 games were in development for the nintendo switch but if what ign france is saying is true it does make me kind of wonder are those out of those 80 games that supposedly reggie said that are coming to the nintendo switch are developers running into a similar problem um, like what Ubi's, like this report claiming that Ubisoft's running into. Um, what about the so-called 20 games that are running on Unreal 4 Engine that are being developed in Japan? Are they running into a similar problem as well? So it is a little worrisome, but I will admit it's a little too early to know for certain. We have to wait and see what happens. But I hope that they are, if the rumor, if this story is true, I hope they're able to figure it out and we do, the game does see the light of day though. It would be disappointing, but but I wouldn't. But I hope that it does. I hope the game does come out, and hopefully this is a problem that can be resolved soon. All right. Right now we'll have to wait and see, but hopefully it is addressed very very soon. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, um, we'll take a little bit of a break. When we come back, we will get to part three of our video, and we'll be talking about the Super NES Classic Edition or the Super NES Mini, as you like to refer to it, and my thoughts about it. So, take a little bit of a break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our video, and for the third part of the Switch and my two, so Switch and Nintendo, my two cent video. It has been been announced for this week that the Super Nintendo Mini or Super Nintendo Classic Edition has been announced by Nintendo and it will be launching in September. I think I think it was September 29th. So according to if I could get it, something in my way there. There we go. All right. Um, basically, according to an article from US Gamer, it has pointed out that they that they will launch the console. Um, the Super Nintendo release release date and what you can pre-order. Let's see. Let me say how much will it cost. It's going to launch around September 29th, though near the end of the end of um, in the September. Um, according to what we know, um, it's the price point here. It is. It's going to be um, $79.99, which is basically $80. Um, as far as what games are in the Super NES Classic Mini, um, according to this list and according to what's been announced, 
Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Donkey Kong Country, good game indeed, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Kirby Superstar, Kirby's Dreamland, The Legend of Zelda A Link to a Pass, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fight, Super Castlevania 4, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG, Legends of the Seven Stars, a good one, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out, and two games I didn't mention on this list, but I'm going to get to mentioning those right now. And the two are Yoshi's Island, that's Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, though. Um, very good game. Um, I have to say um, it has been ported over to the Game Boy Advance, but between the two, I have to go with the Super Nintendo version over the Game Boy Advance version, mostly because of the visuals and some of the levels. So that one. But the biggest one, the biggest thing that was announced for the Super Nintendo Mini that I think a lot of people are going to be trying to pick it up is Star Fox 2. That's right. A game that was released back in 1995 that never saw the light of day on the Super Nintendo here in the U.S. is going to be bundled into the Super Nintendo Mini. So for the first time, American audiences, um, outside of those who try to you know download the ROM or anything off their computer, are going to be able to experience Star Fox 2 for the first time. This, this to me is one of the biggest reasons I'm going to try to find and get my hands on one. So, the announcement though, I guess obviously given the success of the Super Nintendo, the NES Mini though, they are just going forward with this one, the Super Nintendo Mini. Um, what we also know is that, let's see. Uh, what will come in the box is the Super Nintendo Mini console with 21 games built in, an HDMI cable, USB power cable and power adapter, and two wire NES Classic Super Nintendo Classic controllers. It's also been reported that the Super NES Classic controllers are about going to be five foot long um, compared to the NES Mini, which was basically short. Um, I have to say. Normally, I wasn't going to pick this up, though, uh, basically considering the fact that Earthbound, considering that a couple of games like Earthbound's available download on the Wii U to even, I believe, on the Nintendo 3DS as well. And I didn't pick up the NES Mini, and I wasn't going to plan to rush out to get this one. But what changed my opinion, however, was the fact that Star Fox 2, a game that not any of rarely any of us have played is going to be released and to me i can't pass up an opportunity to play a this unreleased um super nintendo game that never saw the light of day here in the u.s as for what i thought was as far as what i as far as what i think about it though i mean it's great that they're working great that they're releasing this but at the same time, I'm worried about that it's going to be the NES Mini all over again. Even though Nintendo claims that they're ratcheting up production, they're going to have more available than they did with the NES Mini, we're still going to run into the problem of, it's still going to run into that whole, <clears throat> excuse me, scalper issue where people are going to be selling it at outrageous prices. Um, last time I checked, I think one person was posted one up and said they were selling it for like $200, so... So, and the wor worried some part is basically people buying maybe more than one or maybe more than two and selling it, you know, like I said, on eBay. Although, according to a person I know at GameStop, they're, they're not taking pre-orders, at least as far as I'm aware of, and they're limited to, I think, just one per customer, which, in a way, that's kind of neat, though, even though the pre-order part's not interesting. So... Um, I have to say, I'm definitely looking forward to trying this one out. I definitely like the idea that we're getting all these games. A lot of them are good, and including the one that we never got over here, Star Fox 2. That's freaking awesome, indeed. Um, I am worried about if they're going to have enough, because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people who want to get it and don't want to be stuck in that NES Mini kind of situation where they were selling it for outrageous prices. So... We'll have to wait and see, but overall, I have to say I am pleased that they're releasing this. I think it's kind of neat. Although I do kind of question how many of these games we will eventually see um, 
when Nintendo does release a virtual console for the Nintendo Switch, I do believe it will happen when, I don't know when though, but I do believe it will happen, how many of these games will make an appearance on there instead, so. But overall, I am. it is nice that they're racing the Super Nintendo Mini. Um, Super Nintendo was a favorite system of mine growing up, along with the NES. Um, but we'll have to wait and see if lessons were learned from the NES Mini, or if if they learn lessons from that, or if they're just going to repeat the same mistakes again. So, but overall, Star Fox 2, yeah. All right, um, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Um, when we come back, I'm going to do a non-video game related, and it's my thoughts of a movie that I saw when I was sort of out and you know doing some stuff. This was it's with some of my family and all. It's called Beatrice at Dinner. I'm going to give my thoughts about it and somewhat of an opinion. Some people may or may not agree with it, but I'll give my thoughts about it. So we'll take a little bit of a, we'll take a bit of a break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with the fourth and final part of our, if I'm doing this correctly right, fourth and final part of our video. Um, this one is not a video game related one. This is my thoughts on a movie that I saw last week. I haven't done one of uh, my thoughts on a movie for a while. I've been busy doing other stuff as well. Um, but for this one, I want to talk about a movie that I got to see over the weekend, despite some of the important stuff I had to deal with, you know, certain, you know, family related stuff to deal with. And that was a dinner, a movie called Beatrice at Dinner. Now this is a indie flick. It's a small movie, like, you know, the kind of movie you would see at a Sundance film festival. And it's basically the story about this woman who was a healer who does massages for this like extremely rich couple and gets invited or basically ha gets invited to a party which is basically she learns about who these people really are and they are not as well not as great people as it is i mean one of the ca cast of character i think john leguo or Le leguo i apologize if i'm saying his name wrong i really do he, he was the main one of the main characters from the old 90s sitcom tv show on nbc third rock from the sun he was sort of the one of the main characters um he plays a character that is very similar to um Donald Trump in a way but he, but he sort of portrays himself as this is a character who, who doesn't care who gets hurt or whatever happens to them as long as it puts money in his pocket he is a-okay and that's sort of the movie basically the movie is very political very anti-Trump I personally don't have an issue with that I certainly am no fan of Trump whatsoever but it is something to sort of point out, though. And it was an interesting film. Um, it may not appeal to a whole lot of people, but it is sort of interesting as it takes a look at basically, you know, like this woman who feels like she doesn't belong, feel like she's totally out of place in a world where all these people, how how these people live, and I'm thinking, figuring how can these people live like this when there's a lot of problems going on in the world right now especially the one scene when they showed him like showing him after he shot like a lion and all that stuff which references you know what i'm referring to um but overall it is an interesting film um again it's not going to be for everybody it's not going to appeal to a whole lot of people some people are going to like it some people are going to hate it though so and I will say it is a political movie. And which brings me to another point I want to point out, though, is that recently there have been some people, especially when I have posted my thoughts about it on Facebook, basically do not like the idea and saying, that, oh, I'm not seeing it because ranging from I'm not seeing it because it's anti-Trump, which I disagree with them, but that's their opinion. But to one argument saying that believe that politics should not be in movies or anything like that. And the thing is, I have to disagree with that argument though, okay? While I do agree not every movie needs to be political or anything like that, I also believe at the same time it is up to the people who make the movie and people who um, direct it if whether they want to add this or not. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of movies, especially a lot of those genre movies, some of them have political views in them. Some of them promote a sort of a political message though. Um, 
I don't know if this is a political message or not, but George A. Romano's classic 1979 movie Dawn of the Dead had a message about how like we're all like zombies that go to a mall and so on. Um, you know, about consumerism and all. Um, let's see. Um, uh, recently, one of my favorite movies, Captain America Winter Soldier, part of Phase 2's Marvel Cinematic Universe, basically the political had a political message in there and that question is are you how much of your how much of your freedom are you willing to sacrifice in the name of safety and security that's just something going on out there to man of steel which i did enjoy that movie i mean it may not be good as the original superman back in the 80s but still i enjoyed that enjoyed man of steel who made when which superman took down a predator drone and made a comment saying i was raised in kansas is that not american enough for you sort of a com sort of a basically a comment on the whole immigration issue so and to even to an, to an lesser extent video games have done this as well um one of my favorite video games one of my favorite video games um number five of my favorite video games of all time would be Valkyrie Chronicles, if I'm saying that correctly, um, that has not only shows the message about war, but it also portrays a group of people that were persecuted, though, especially during World War II. The Darsons, for example, that were like just like how the Jews were, how my religion example, the Jews in, were treated during World War II, you know, with the Holocaust and so on, not to mention other ethnic groups like the Gypsies, the Poles as well. So, um, so, I mean, even like I said, even other forms of entertainment have been able to deliver a message like that. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be done correctly, though. I mean, you don't want to beat people over the head over it, though. But if done right, I mean, it could deliver a very powerful message and sort of this basically tell you this is what this is what the message is all about. Now, again, like I said, not everyone will agree with that politics some people will say politics should stay out of entertainment or stay out of movies and like i said earlier not every movie is going to be like that nor not every video game is going to be like that but i disagree with the argument that politics should stay completely out okay i think it's really up to the um the people who make the movie or the game and up to the writers directors to decide whether they want to put this in or not and audience ultimately will have the final say so bottom line is that i agree politics may not be for everyone i i understand politics is a very touchy subject i understand not everyone wants to see politics in movies and video games or anything like that but i disagree with the notion it should be taken out completely i think it has a right to be there at the same time, audience have a right to decide whether they agree with the message or not. Um, like I said, I'm not here to encourage you to go see Beatrice at dinner. I thought it was interesting, but not everybody is going to find it interesting. You can decide whether you want to see it or not. You can decide to base your review on Metacritic or Rotten Tomato. That's your call, though. I do think it's an. I personally do think it's interesting. I also think it's definitely anti-Trump, which I don't have an issue with it but other people may have a difference of opinion on it though. So bottom line is I understand politics is not for everyone, but I disagree with the argument that it sh shouldn't be in entertainment or anything like that. I strongly disagree with that. I see that they have a right to put it in. It's free speech. You don't have to agree with it. You could take your money and go someplace else, but I ha don't have an issue with them putting politics in you know movies or books or comic books or mangas or animes or video games the only thing i would say is don't beat me over the head with it just get straight to the point to deliver that clear cut message at least that's how i see it okay um this concludes my my two cent video focusing on you know the nintendo switch and nintendo and of course the little non-nintendo thing my thoughts on Beatrice at dinner and politics in movies though and again these are my opinion okay okay and again these are my opinion but my opinion but what are yours um what are your thoughts on Reggie's comment about 4k television or 4k in general do you think he's spot on about that do you think he's wrong about that 
Uh, what about your thoughts about Steep on the Nintendo Switch? Do you think that the stories from IGN France is true, that they're having development issues? Do you think they've already ironed that out? Or do you think this game will never see the light of day? Um, and what about the Super NES Classic Edition slash Mini? Are you looking forward to getting it? Or are you not looking forward to getting it? Are you planning to get one? Or are you planning to skip it altogether? And for those who are getting it, are you getting it for just to try out Star Fox 2? Like, like I am though, or is there another reason why? And finally, last but not least, uh, did any of you see the movie Beatrice at Dinner? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you not see it at all? Do you think politics have a place in entertainment? Do you think it doesn't have a place at it at all? Um, do you agree with what I said in this video? Or do you disagree with what I said in this video? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you would if you want to you could do it through paypal me or you could do it through patreon again links will be in the description of this video anyway this concludes my two cent video for this week though and i will see you again next time when i do another video hopefully that will be soon until then for southern california i wish you all a good day then bye